What's up, everybody? Coach PJ here, <clears throat> excuse me, with your Friday revival message that I try it in this format on video to show you that you're dealing with a real person. Some of you know that already, some of you may not. Uh, at any rate, I think this is a good discussion going into the weekend. Um, I hope you can see this um, little infographic I made. I posted this on my Instagram feed last week, I think. Um, and I want to hit on this, this subject going into the weekend. It's, it's a good message. Um, a lot of you have heard me say that the only way that you can mess this process up, uh, the fitness and nutrition stuff, the only way you can mess it up is by not getting back on track if you fall off. Okay, that's the only way you can screw up. So, you know, if you have a bad meal or a bad day, really off plan day, um, bad weekend, like this coming weekend, hope nobody does, uh, over the top vacation, what happens is, um, you know, a lot of people think, screw up all my progress, I'm done, it's over, and then they use these these minor um, screw-ups, these missteps, as an excuse to keep effing up, right? They use it as an excuse. Um, when the reality is, all you got to do is jump back on track, okay? It's a, it's a long game process, all right? What you do consistently matters a hell of a lot more than what you do or don't do here and there intermittently. Okay, and this little infographic, I want to give you guys some perspective on this. So in this infographic, if you look over the course of an entire year, 365 days, if you were in a 500 calorie daily deficit 70% of the year, okay, that's basically 256 days, all right, that would equate to about 36 pounds of lost body fat, okay? Now, what if the other 30% of the year, um, 110 days, you were in a thousand calorie uh, daily surplus above and beyond your maintenance level calories. Pretty good surplus. Um, not a binge necessarily, but you know, if they think about like a nice big double cheeseburger or uh, you know, three nice slices of pizza or you know, uh, a pint of ice cream, whatever. All right, so that would equate to, if you did that 110 days a year, that would equate to uh, about 31 extra pounds, all right? But if you take the difference between those two, what ultimately happens is even if you were significantly messing up 30% of the time, 110 days, you could still theoretically lose over five pounds of body fat over the course of a year, okay? So understand that there is room to screw up and it's not all over. It's about your ability and willingness to get back on track because, you know, the funny thing about this, this little infographic I made in the real world for, you know, 95% of people, this is why we have a huge obesity epidemic and creeping weight gain. When people get age 25 to 50, they put on 40, 50 pounds. This is why, because what I just discussed, it gets reversed. Most people are in a 1000 calorie daily surplus. 70% of the year and then get disgusted with themselves and go on some stupid diet or try to eat better um, or, you know, hire a coach and get a meal plan and they do that 30% of the year. Okay. It's reversed. All right. Um, and that's the problem, right? They're doing the wrong shit 70% of the time and the right stuff 30% of the time. And here's how this cycle works. Somebody has a big, we call it calorie, cal calorie clumping, right? Calorie clumping. You have these big two, three, four month surplus driven periods where you put on a lot of fat and then you're like, I'm disgusting. I feel and look terrible. I'm going on a diet and they might do that for a couple of weeks. Either they do it hardcore or they kind of do it and they end up, you know, maybe losing three, five, 10 pounds, but then it gets hard, right? It, it's not fast enough for me. I want it all off now, not fast enough. Screw it, I quit, not fast enough. Then they go back into surplus mode for 
big chunks of time. I'm not talking about one day or three days. I'm talking about the entire holiday season from Halloween to New Year's. Okay? Rinse and repeat. I'm disgusting. I put on another 10 pounds. I'm going to try to diet again. Go on a diet, hire a coach, get a meal plan. You're good for three or four weeks. You're, you're making some progress, but it's just not fast enough for me. I'm done. This sucks. I hate quantifying my food. I'm done. Back in the surplus mode. Okay, so 70% of everybody's years are spent in the surplus mode with little periods of either hardcore dieting or just trying to do better. Okay, so that's the message. If you can do this the vast majority of the time, you're going to be fine. I talk about 90% compliance to this plan over and over to you guys. When I say that, I'm talking about optimal results in the best time frame possible, right? That's what that takes. You didn't hire me. You know, I, I set up programs with, with optimal in mind, right? So when I tell you 90% compliance, that's result getting range. It is for what we're doing, but you need to zoom out and think about what I just told you. 110 days, days a year, you could be messing up pretty bad, okay? But if 70% of the time you're doing what we're doing, you're going to be fine. You know, you might only end up losing, you know, five, eight pounds doing it that way over the course of a year. But think about it. If you weren't doing it, you'd be five, eight, 10, 15 pounds heavier, okay? So think about it like that. So let's say this. What if... Uh, you cut your, you know, you were still eating in a surplus 30% of the year, 110 days. But what if you cut the, the, the calorie surplus down to 500 calories? Still a pretty decent cheat, right? Your results would double. Okay, now we're down 11 pounds in the year. What if you cut your days down to, uh, you know, 55 days a year in a 500 calorie daily surplus? Results double again, okay? That's how it works. So what I'm, you know, this is this is different, obviously, than what we talk about about 90% on this plan. But think about it that way. There's room to mess up here. All of this is your ability or inability, in a lot of cases, is to not let these minor missteps turn into downward spirals, okay? Downward spirals, where it's, Oh my God, I had a terrible weekend, you know, got on the scale, I'm four pounds heavier, this sucks, I hate this plan, I derailed all my progress, I quit, this is too hard. Okay, that's what, you know, that's the exact wrong thing to do, logically we know that. You know, if you mess up, the, you know, as logical human beings, we know that continuing to mess up is not going to solve our problems. So, just think about all that, long game. All right. And what I'm talking about here, all of this, it all comes down to your ability to be patient, have realistic expectations, because we are doing this within the confines of a normal life. Okay. Nobody, nobody here is hardcore. Well, a couple people are hardcore fitness. My life depends on it. This is my only priority. Um, you know, my next paycheck depends on all this. That's not it. We're doing this within the confines of normal life with competing demands, with competing, you know, forms of enjoyment. All right. So you have to, you know, you have to wrap your head around the fact that it's going to take some time, man. I mean, a lot of people, you know, it took you five, 10 years plus to get in the spot you didn't want to be. If most people would just take a year with this long game approach and not get thrown off by my progress isn't fast enough and oh my God, I messed up and you know, I'm done. If people would just take a year to solve this problem, they could do it. If they have the resiliency to understand that mess ups are, are going to be a part of this. Sure. We strive for excellence. Sure. We do. Um, but perfection is not, not required. I mean, all, all the stuff I just told you, perfection is not required here one bit. But it, it's, it, guys, it, it comes down to, I've been doing this a long time, and it's always impatience. I should be getting results faster, blah, blah, blah. You know, I, I want it yesterday. It's got to happen now. No, it's not the way it works, okay? And I try to educate you guys on this. 
just take a year of your life and do it pretty darn well. Not perfect. I just showed you, you don't have to do it perfect, but take a year of your life. You know, if it happens faster than, you know, faster than that, great. And in a lot of cases it can and does, but that's, you know, if you want faster results, comply to the plan, make this really high on your priority list, you know, comply to the plan to a greater extent, do everything possible if you want faster results. Um, and like, you know, I've, I've covered this with a lot of you guys individually. Your idea of what good progress is, is, is screwy. Okay. You know, if, from an evidence-based perspective in the scientific literature, good weight, what's considered successful good weight loss? It's losing 10% of your body weight and keeping it off at a rate of somewhere. There's a lot of factors that go in this, into this somewhere between 0.25 and 1% of your starting body weight per week. Okay. So a 200 pound person who loses 20 pounds um, in, you know, 20 weeks, that's, that's good weight loss, right? 20 pounds in 20 weeks is a pound a week. That's 0.5% of that person's starting body weight every week for 20 weeks. Not a sexy message, not what you hear on The Biggest Loser and all these reality shows and everything else from the tabloid magazines or in Dr. Oz or whatever gobbledygook that people, and this shapes people's expectations, right? So it's, it, it all comes down to somebody's willingness to play a long, long game with this. This is not an eight-week fix, a 12-week fix. Depending on who you are, it, it can be. I mean, you'd have to be very, very perfect with a plan. And, and it has a lot to do with realistic, real-world expectations and understanding that you're doing this within the confines of a normal adult life. Jobs, kids, social obligations, hobbies, other priorities, okay? But I know the answer is, is not to think I should be losing 10 pounds a week and if I don't do it in the first week, I'm done and then revert back to eating like garbage and not moving and being 10 pounds worse next year. I've had clients, guys, who have come back to me because they weren't getting results fast enough and they were, um, in their mind, they weren't. Um, you know, this is, you know, I'm at a stall on a plateau. I don't want to do this anymore. Six months later, I hear back from them. Oh my gosh, I wish I'd give anything to be back to where I was when I stopped working with you. And I was down 10 pounds in, in six weeks. Now I'm 20 pounds from that point because I wasn't patient. Happens all the time. All, I got a lot of repeat clients here okay, who did, who finally, they finally get it. Right. So I'll leave you with that. Um, but understand that, you know, you can screw up quite a bit if you're willing to play a very long game and be very patient and have very low recency, right? Recency is this happened rear view mirror. I'm just, I'm back on track. That's the fitness lifestyle. And that's what I want everybody to live. It's not what you do all the time. It's what you do the majority of the time. Okay. Lifestyle doesn't mean all encompassing all the time. It means what you do the majority of the time because you like the way you look, feel, perform, produce. You feel better. You look better. You, you're more productive spouse, employee, business owner, whatever it might be. You do it for that reason. Okay. Don't be like everybody else who is living this gluttonous way the vast majority of the year and then tries to intermittent, intermittently diet and, you know, once it gets hard in a couple of weeks into the diet, they give up and they go back. And I'm telling you, you do that for five, 10, 15, 20 years. You're, <laughs> this is how people end up 50 pounds heavier from age 25 to 50. That's how, okay. You don't have to be perfect with it. You just got to commit to excellence. That's all you're going to do. So I'll leave you with that. Uh, have a great weekend and let me know if I can do anything for you. Thanks.